guys, welcome back to another Roblox scripting tutorial. So today we're going to be finishing the Morph GUI. So we're going to be fixing a few bugs and adding a few features. <clears throat> so the first bug we're going to fix is the uh, people have been reporting that their characters are just dying instantly when they spawn. And so to fix this we're going to open the Morph script here in the server script service. And this line right here, Jeff Trooper dot head clear all children. We are going to delete it because that is killing our character. And what we're going to do instead is we'll do if Dev Trooper find first child of class decal then and we'll copy this line and we will destroy it so the reason we had this clear old children thing there before was to get rid of the face on our character and the face is in Roblox terms is called a decal the class of the item is called a decal so we're going to check to see if oh we have to check to see if it's in the head so devtrooper.head. So we're going to check to see if there's a decal in the head, and if there is, we're going to destroy it. So it will remove its face. Another thing here that we have to fix is the dev trooper find first child helmet. Well, because we edited this function in a previous video to work with uh, different types of body parts, this will effectively remove the helmet if you try to add, like, on an arm piece, for example. So we have to fix this. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you guys can see a bit better. So, Dev Trooper Fine for Shroud Helmet. We want to change helmet to body part dot name. So, for example, if we try to add on a left arm piece and the body part, or sorry, not body part, we're going to do object, object dot name. If the object's name is left body part, then if it finds that inside the dev trooper, it will remove it rather than only removing the helmet. Yeah, and actually for this, we're going to change. Yeah, we're going to change dot head here to body part, so it finds a decal in the body part rather than head because that would have just it would have removed the face multiple times. And then here we'll do. If body part equals head, then end. And if you, well, maybe we'll do um, if object if object equals helmet. Yeah. So if you're if you're if you come over to this morphs folder, you look at wolf here. If if you're trying to put on this helmet onto the character, it will make the head transparency one. Now, if this helmet was named anything else, it would not make the head transparent and would keep the head on your character, which is important in some cases. Also, to make this script compatible with R15, which was another very common question, all you have to do is... Uh, that, yeah, so say like you had like a... R15 person with like a there's an there's a bottom actually let me spawn in the R15 guy real quick. This guy will do fine. So on the R15, if you look over here in the explorer menu, you have a left lower arm, and you also have like the left upper arm, and then you have the left hand. So there's many more parts on the R15, so when you morph your R15 character. So say like you had this leg one. Maybe you want to do that to the left upper leg, for example. That's not how you spell leg or upper. Or maybe you had you also have like a, a leg two. And that would be your left lower leg. So if you do that for all your different parts, then that will make your script compatible with R15.
And I do believe that's it for that. So the next thing we have to do is make it so when your character spawns in, they change teams. So we're going to go up here to the model. And we're going to click the service button, and then we're going to add the team service. And that will add a little teams folder. Also, yeah, your menu, this explore menu, is probably over here for you. Uh, but I like it over here, so I'm going to keep it here. So we're going to add two teams. We're going to name one of them. We're going to name one of them Republic, and the other one CIS because that is where our two teams are. And we're going to change the colors of our teams. Republic will be red, CIS will be blue, and we're going to see this auto assignable button we have to make sure that is not checked because if it is checked then people will when they first join the game roblox will automatically put them on the team which is not what we want but we do want them to we want to make this team auto assignable the choosing team so we want so when they join the game they're going to be put on the choosing team we want that to be true and we're also going to right click and then we're going to insert object and we're going to find spawn location so when they first join the game, we want them we want the players to spawn in what we call a spawn box. What did I just select? Oh yeah. Okay, oops. Make sure you're not selecting stuff under your map like that. <laughs> and yeah, so we're gonna make a spawn box. So oh actually yeah, Roblox updated the way their spawn locations work. So what all we have to do now is make this thing massive. <laughs> so effect basically what's happening is when a player joins they will randomly spawn on any place on the spawn location so one person might spawn there one person might spawn here one person might spawn here etc and what we want to do is we want to put their characters inside of this box so they can't accidentally fall out Yeah, and so after we put them in the box, we will hide it under the map so no one can see it and no one even knows it exists. And then we can also do one across the top. It doesn't matter if it's pitch black in here because the players won't actually know that they're in here. And we're going to remove these dummies because we don't need them anymore. And we're going to select that. We're going to hit Control G to group it. And we're just going to simply drag it underneath the map. And you can literally put this thing anywhere. You can try not to go too low because if you look here in workspace, there's this thing that says, where is it? Fallen parts destroy height, minus 500. So if there's any part that goes below negative 500, it will get destroyed. Yes, yeah, so you want to make sure your part is slightly below the map like this. And you can check it by clicking one of the parts and <clears throat> in the position you'll see negative 65 or whatever your Y is. But as long as it's not negative 500 there won't be a problem. And inside we're going to select our spawn location. Turn off neutral and we're going to make it white. The team color white. And in our choosing team we want to make sure that's the same team color so that team will spawn on that spawn location. All right, now for the choosing team part. We're going to go back to our morph script. And We're going to add some, another variable, team. Then we'll do player.team equals game.teams find first child team. But wait, we have to make sure that it's not exploitable because then the exploiter can just say they want to go into the Republic team even if they're not in the Republic group. So we want to do if team equals 
we're public, then if player is in group. And then you want to put the group ID for Republic here. And we save that under, so you have to do require game.replicatedStorage.libs.divisions, and then go out of the bracket and do main division. So this will open up the division script and look at this, or sorry, main group, sorry. So if they're in the main group, then they can go into the Republic team. Then we'll just do, yeah, so here we want to say if they are not in the group, then we'll put them on the CIS team. And then we'll give, we'll, then we'll put them on their team. Yeah, so, and then we'll come down here to our morph selection open up our script and go down to where we spawn in right here okay so we're going to a new variable up top we'll add a new section variables local team equals and then we'll, we'll default it to CIS and down here if they go to the Raider team we'll do team equals CIS and then up here we'll do team equals Republic and down here where they do the spawn We'll just select it morph and then we'll also pass the team variable. So now if we test this out. Oh yes, we have to anchor our spawn box. So select your spawn box and click anchor up here. Let's head back in. Our camera should have changed. Okay, we're we're gonna, we're gonna f hmm. yeah we're gonna have to add a new uh, a new thing there. So when we spawn, we should spawn on the Republic team. Torso is not a valid number of model. Oh, mine R fifteen model. Yeah, that's another thing, guys. So when you're testing your game, you have to make sure that if you're if you're making your game R six, come up here to game settings, avatar and change avatar type to R6 or else your testing will be messed up because you'll be testing as an R15 person but your your game is set up to work as an R6 and that's the same if you're trying to do an R15 game make sure it's actually set to R15 in that menu so now if we click Republic and we spawn as Rex for example we will spawn on the Republic team there we go but our head is showing all right, so let's fix that. In the morph script, if object, oh yeah, sorry, if object.name is the helmet, then it will make the head transparent. All right, and we're going to also add a new camera piece. So choose like a little scene in your game that looks kind of cool. This, this will do fine. And then here, down here in the command bar, do local p equals instance dot new part workspace then p dot c frame equals uh, workspace dot current camera dot c frame and that will create a new part right with your camera and we'll name this part start cam and then we'll cut it move it down to our local script and then we will do up here right in this init area here we'll do um, 
workspace dot current camera dot camera type equals scriptable workspace dot current camera dot c frame equals script dot start cam dot c frame yeah so now when we start the game the player won't see the spawn box and instead they'll see this little scene that we've just set up with, with that camera and then so if we choose republic now and we spawn in our head is no longer visible and we're on the republic team awesome what else just to make sure it works with the CIS I'm just going to have a zero at the end of this main group ID so now I won't be able to join a clone group but I can join a CIS group and it doesn't work alright so down here Why won't that work? Oh, okay. So we just have to, uh, here we're going to do camera or sorry, camera to camera type equals custom. And we're going to copy this line here, line 237, bring it up here. We'll do selected morph equals nil and then we'll pass CIS for the team actually no sorry we're just gonna make that team yeah so yeah that should work fine now let's test it out if we click CIS we spawn in on the CIS team line 60 in the morph script is giving us trouble that's probably because we said morph ter is non-existent. So we'll do if not a bit more space. If not morph dir, then return nil. So that basically says if oops, that should be end at the end. If the uh, morph directory doesn't exist, it's just going to stop the script there, and it won't do anything else. But we want to, yeah, yeah, sorry. So, yeah. And that brings up the problem of not having a weapon. So we're going to add here in the CIS, we're just going to add a pretend weapon. We'll name it CIS gun. And Republic will add Republic gun. We're going to add it into the team objects. And then in our morph script, we're going to copy this here. We're going to move it before the if not morph DIR part. And then we'll do um, game.teams find first child team. And then we'll do get children. And then if it's a tool, it will put it in. So what happens if you, if when you spawn as a clone, you'll get this Republic gun in addition to any gun that's inside your morph. So you'll also get this AK-47 if you spawn as a wolf. And for the CIS, you'll only get that CIS gun. So let's test this out. So if you spawn CIS, you get the CIS gun. Excellent. And if we spawn as Republic, we should get the Republic gun plus, I think it's an AK-47. Oh, we have to change the uh, ID back to what it was so I can test that. So if you click Republic now, spawn as wolf and then we'll have the republic gun and the AK-47 awesome so that is oh yeah one more thing we should probably do is replace these guys with spawn locations so what we'll do we'll take where is it spawn Oh, sorry. You have to make sure you're not clicking the object. Click the empty workspace, and then we'll make the front of this also a hinge so we can see. So front, 
is a hinge so the player will spawn facing that yellow block and what we'll do we'll just move it next to it and then we'll size it down so we're doing this so <clears throat> the player can spawn on top of this block when they when they respawn so what we'll do we'll make sure that in the spawn location neutral is not selected and the team color is the same as your Republic team. In this case, I believe it was that navy blue color. Nope, it was, that's the CIS one. Um, Republic one is the maroon color. And just to help you visualize it, I'd also change the brick color, but the brick color does not really matter all that much. And, yeah, because we changed the teammates, we're also going to have to change these, uh, um, these location thingies. So, we'll make this blue one, we'll name that Raider Spawn to replace this red block. And then we'll name this this Republic Spawn block, we'll name it Friend Spawn. And then remove this. And now we will select both of them. Transparency to one. Can collide to false. And then we're going to double click the top of it to select that decal. Double click, select it, and remove it. So now we have invisible spawns in our world where the players will spawn. So now if we if we spawn in as as Republic, and if we die in game, say we get shot by a, a raider or something. <laughs> back to the morph menu and there we go now we're back in the game excellent so if you guys have any more questions make sure you put them down in the comments or check out our discord server the discord server is definitely the best place to get your questions answered because that's where I'm most active um, as always this script will be available on the lettuce garden group and yeah, it's free to take. Anyone can have it. And yeah, I'm excited to see what you guys do with this with this Amorph GUI. And if there's any more problems, I'll release a new video fixing those.